Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to your Python series. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys the various inbuilt functions in Python. Now, in the last lecture, we discussed how to make our own functions, but Python has tons and tons of functions you can use with various data types, and I'm going to cover just a few of them just to get your hands dirty and understand what are some of the functions that exist. So let's get started. The first function I'm discussing is going to be the absolute function. That is ABS and then parentheses. Inside the parentheses, you pass in a number. And absolute value works just like the mathematical statement. It takes any positive or negative number and makes it positive. So absolute value of 34 is 34. Absolute value of negative 23 is positive 23. Again, it's a mathematical function. Just for you guys' reference, absolute value is known as ABS in Python. And you can call it on any negative or positive number to get the positive version of that number. Awesome. The second function we're learning is the bool function. The bool function takes in any number and if the number is zero, it returns false. Otherwise, in any other case, it'll return true. So bool of zero gives me false because Boolean values are zeros and ones. Any other thing, so bool of one, bool of 100, anything else you do, it's always going to be true. And zero and none are very similar. So if I do bool of none, again, none is basically blank, nothing exists, it's like zero, then you get false as well. So the bool function is used to basically check to see, hey, is your value a zero or is it a one? It's very effective in using that sort of that bool condition as you might have seen in Boolean code. The next function we're gonna learn is the dir function. And the dir function basically tells us all the various functions you can use with a specific item. For example, let's say we have a string. I wanna know what all can I do with a string? So I'm gonna go ahead and say dir, hello. Again, this string could be anything. And then it gives me a list of all the various things I can do. I have all these different functions. There's join, lower, title, strip, split lines. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So dir is very useful when you have a specific data type or you have a specific object and you want to figure out, hey, what function exists? Is there something that Python has that I can use? Now, let's say that I wanted to uppercase all the letters, okay? I have this function over here. It's called upper. But I want to know what does that function do? Does it uppercase the first letter? Does it uppercase all the letters? I want to find out more about this function. That's where the help function comes in. The help function tells us, hey, what's going on? Does this actually work? So I'm going to go ahead and store hello as a sort of sentence. Sent is equal to hello. And then I'm going to go ahead and call help sent.upper. Okay. So again, very straightforward. The help function takes in a function name. So basically, instead of calling upper, we call the data type or the data object and then the function. And if you enter, it tells us what it does. The upper function basically takes in um, the string and it returns a copy of s converted to uppercase. Awesome. So that tells us, hey, that's what the upper function does. If I want to find out, okay, uh, looking over the functions, well, what does split lines do? So sent dot split lines. Hit enter. And split lines tells us returns a line, list of lines in S breaking at line boundaries. Awesome. So that's the help function for you guys. It's very, very useful when you're looking at the dir, um, the return value of dir, and you're trying to figure out is there a function that works, or in general, if you're ever confused about something, just run the help function on it to figure out what's going on. Awesome job, guys. Just a few more functions. We have eval and exec. The eval function is used to basically run Python code in a string format. For example, if I have a string, let's go ahead and make sent to a string. Sent is equal to print high. Okay. So that would work in Python if I just done this print high. Um, actually, would it? No, I wouldn't quotation marks. So let me go ahead and add quotation marks. And I'm going to go ahead and do single quotes outside so that Python knows what I'm doing. Awesome. And then I'm going to go ahead and run eval of sent. And that gives me high. So what the evaluate function does is it takes the string, it takes in your string and it runs it as if it were Python code. So if you maybe have a text document of Python code, or if you wrote it in a doc and you get that doc into your Python code and you want to run that code, you would use eval or you would use execute. So exec on the other hand is very similar. It does the exact same thing, but execute is more for complicated code. If you have multi-line code, multiple lines of code, you would use execute instead of evaluate. Evaluate is more likely used for something that's, you know, one line, something very straightforward. What is five times three? 15. Okay. 
So that's evaluate and execute. Evaluate for one line, um, one line strings that are basically Python code and execute for multi-line Python code. Awesome job guys, just a couple of more. Um, to finish it off, we have string, int, and float. So we discussed data types in like the first few lectures of the series and we understood that, hey, there's strings, there's integers, there's floats, a whole bunch of that. But how do we convert from one data type to another? For example, let's say we have an integer, okay? A is equal to one. I want to string it. I want to make it into a string instead of an integer. I'm going to call str of A. That gives me it in the string format. If I want it in a float format, I'd call float of A, and that gives me 1.0. And if I want the normal int format of it, I just call int of A, and that gives me one. So these are the three function you use to convert between string, float, and integer. And maybe you want, you know, print it out in a, maybe you want to print out a statement as a string. Maybe you need a float to do some decimal division. Doesn't matter what it is, but these three functions exist to convert between data, different data types. Okay. So let's do a quick recap of all the functions we learned. I'm going to go ahead and quickly list them down here. First one is absolute. Absolute value function takes in a number. If it's zero or none, it's going to return false. Anything else, it's going to return true. Oh, I'm sorry. Bool is that. Absolute value takes in any number and based on if it's negative or positive, it's always going to return positive. Boolean on the other hand will take in zero or none and will always return false. Otherwise, it's always going to return true based on anything you put in. Going back over here, we have directory. Directory gives you a list of all the functions related to the specific object you passed in. Help will tell you what the function does, what the method does based on what you pass in to the help um, parameter. Then we had exec and evaluate. Evaluate for single line codes, uh, execute for multi-line uh, lines of code. And then we had string, float, and integer. String, again, use a string to convert from an int or float to a string. Use float to convert from a string or int to a float. And you use int to convert from a string or float to an int. Again, all these functions are very common, very straightforward. And hopefully all this made sense to you guys. Anyways, thanks for listening. I'll see you in the next lecture. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.